All right, so we're gonna get started with 30 seconds of work for five different movement patterns to get warmed up. And we're gonna do that twice. So we've got a quadruped, quadruped position hold, uh, over under hurdle, torso rotations, side plank kicks on each side for five sets, All right? And we'll do that twice. So come on down to hands and knees. I'll bring this here so we can get into position. So you're gonna come down to hands and knees with your knees directly underneath your hips, hands directly underneath your shoulders, and elbows slightly bent. If you tend to hyperextend your elbow, make sure that they're slight, slightly bent, okay? You want them straight, but not locked out. If you can't pick your knees up off the ground or if you need to bring them back down, then go ahead and do that. We're gonna hold for 30 seconds. And go. So as you're here, I want you to focus really on your breathing. Breathe into your belly, into your low back, into the space between your shoulder blades. And while you're doing that, think about the position of your spine and all the muscles relative to it and all the joints relative to it. Two seconds, good. And then we're gonna crawl back and forth. And you can go kind of side to side. Again, if you need to bring your knees down, bring your knees down, but move opposite. One hand and the opposite foot. And you're just gonna crawl around. Totally off plan here. That's all right. Five seconds, we're gonna pop back up. We're going to the hurdles, like I had said, and screwed up. So we're gonna step over an imaginary hurdle and then under and then over an imaginary hurdle, and then under. And we're gonna go back and forth, just like that. Gradually getting lower and lower, waking those legs up. Back and forth. We've got our torso rotations next. So we're gonna finish up here, and we're just gonna spin. Nice and easy. Just getting a sense of motion through the whole body. The arms are just floating there through space. I'm not making my arms rotate. I'm making my torso rotate and the arms follow. Nice and easy. We're gonna come down to the floor into a side plank next. So come on down, bottom knee bent, top leg straight. And maybe all you wanna do is hold the side plank. Otherwise, you're gonna drop your hips down, bring that top knee in and out. If the kicks are too much, you could just hold the side plank with the leg up or the leg down. About five more seconds and we're gonna go to the other side. Five seconds, and then we're back to the hold. Right here, hands and knees, or hands and feet. Think about rotating your elbow pits forward to hold. Arms straight, but not locked out. Spine nice and long. Three seconds to go and come on up, hurdles. Imagine that there's a short hurdle next to you. You're gonna step over it. There's a tall hurdle next to you. You're gonna step under it, back and forth. Don't really worry about the hurdle. It's just about warming up the legs. Keeping the back flat as you hinge forward. And then we're down. We're gonna go right into the kicks. And 
and we're going to switch halfway so we can get the torso rotations. That's it. Other side. Two seconds. And spin. Come on up and twist. And we'll finish with this. Just send that energy out through the fingertips. Breathing, rotating, let that back heel kick up. Wake up the whole body. All right, we've got a minute to get ready for our first set. So I've got here three sets of weights, moderate light, moderate, moderate heavy, and a band that's moderate heavy. We're gonna do front squats. We're gonna do bench press, bent over row, pullovers. There's also a split squat and a curl. So if you're working body weight, it's gonna be just a body weight squat, push-ups, hip hinge, just down and back, keeping your back flat, back and forth. Split squats, just as we'll do uh, if you're using weights. So we'll look at that. And then a hip bridge on your back, knees bent, hips up and down. And we'll look at that as well when we get going. So you're gonna to wanna to get started in the front squat or the squatting position, prepare for that. I'm gonna use my band, but you could hold a kettlebell or a dumbbell, or you could just choose to use your body weight even if you have weight. Here we go. We're up and down, front squat. We're working for 30 seconds and there will be a 15 second transition here. Pace yourself. We're gonna do three sets. So got my black band here. That's it. All right, 15 seconds to get into position for our chest press. So either you're gonna do push-ups on your knees or you're gonna come to your back here to do a Chest press, down and up for 30 seconds. Regardless of whether you choose to use weights or body weight, you want to think about your spine. Keeping it in neutral. And listening to your body. That's it, come on down or up. We're gonna go into the bent over row. Now you're gonna have both weights in one hand, uh, a weight in each hand, or you're just gonna hinge. And you're gonna pull right in alongside the body, resisting gravity's pull on your spine. So whether you're doing the hip hinge, moving dynamically, or you're holding the hip hinge, adding in a row, you're gonna think about the position of your spine. Keep it flat and long. Don't let yourself collapse under the weight of gravity. Keep your chest up, keep your head up. Two seconds here. Good. Now we're gonna go into our split squat. We're gonna add a curl or not. It's your body weight. We're gonna alternate. All right, so you're gonna squat down and curl up. Down and curl up. Or you're just gonna split squat. If you wanted to curl with both sides, you could do that. Good, all right, and pause. Actually, we're gonna come down onto our backs for the pullovers. Arms are straight, knees are bent. If you're doing bridges, just bring your arms down, hips will come up and down. Otherwise, we're gonna pull over. What we're looking for on the pullover is that we engage our abdominals 
stabilize the spine, but we allow the muscles along the side of the body, up into the shoulder blade to stretch and contract as we come back to the start. That's it. And that's it. All right, that's our first set. I'm gonna take a minute now between sets to adjust uh, and edit. So you might want to increase your weight. You might wanna increase how quickly you move. That's gonna be up to you based on how difficult or easy that last set felt. If it felt pretty easy, go heavier or move faster. If it didn't, keep it the same or decrease. Just thinking about giving this a whirl. This is my purple band. Thinking about that. And this for my pullovers. Okay. All right, we've got five seconds. So we're going into our squats. Get up and begin. We've got our front squats here. 30 seconds, 15 seconds to recover. And transition. It means as soon as we're done working on our exercise, we've got to start thinking about the next to get safely into position. Two seconds. Good. All right. You should definitely feel a little burn by the end of that set. Think about how you can increase the intensity. All right. Push ups, chest press. Begin. Keep your head up, spine long, and the abdominals engaged. Remember, a push-up is a moving plank. Don't let your hips sag or your head sag. You want your spine to be stable as you move it through space. Three seconds, hip hinge, and or bent over row. Let the entire back work together here. Just because you're moving your arms doesn't mean the low back isn't working. In fact, it's working to resist the pull of gravity. And that is a great job. Remember your arms and your shoulder blades belong to your back, not your neck. Five seconds here. Keep up that pace and done. Good. All right, now we're going into our split squat and curl. So we're alternating the split squats. So we're stepping back each time. I'm gonna curl both arms at once. Ready, here we go. Back and up. But you can do whatever you want based on the last set. Just use your arms. Don't rock into the curl, right? Don't kick back. Just stay tall and just flex the elbow. All right, we're coming down for our pullover slash. Here we go. Ugh. Darn it. Pullover slash bridge. Mm. 
use those abdominals. <sighs> Give it a couple extra. Since this is our finish, I started late. <sighs> Alrighty. That's the end of our second set. You should be a little out of breath. You should be a little winded at the end of that second set. You should have been able to get your heart rate up a little bit higher because you added a little bit of weight or you moved a little bit more swiftly based on how your body responded after the first set. It should be cumulative, okay? The first set should have felt maybe a little funky, maybe like you're still warming up. The second set should have felt like now you're starting to cook with fire, you're starting to move, starting to get your heart rate up. Transitions felt a little quicker. And now I really want you to push it. If that speaks to you, if you're here, you're just waking up, shaking off the turkey dust, that's fine. If you wanna sweat, this is where you can turn up the heat a little bit. All right, we're gonna get ready for our front squat. We've got about 10 seconds. So get the appropriate weight, get into position. Here we go, hit it. Last set of this here. But listen to your body. Don't just push it because you think you're supposed to, because you think a workout isn't worth it if you don't sweat or if you don't ache. It's putting your body through these movement patterns, changing the way you move, use, and think about your body. That's gonna give you the results you want. Also, you know, making dietary changes, lifestyle changes, and all of that. Okay, that's it. You've got to do the whole package together. You can't just beat yourself up in the gym and expect to see the change you want to see. So don't beat yourself up here at all. Use this as an opportunity for learning about yourself. Here we go. Speed comes with practice. Don't rush to be somewhere you're not ready to be. If you just want to get your heart rate up, take a dance class, go swimming, get on the bike, go for a walk up a hill, take a jog. In here, that's it. Learn about how your body moves so that you can go do those things safely and get your heart rate up. Yeah, we want to get our heart rate up here. But that's a result of proper technique and training. What am I doing? Beds over row, hinge. Flapping my jaw, not paying attention. If you're doing your hip hinge, you're going from standing to this position repeatedly, that's it. Your arms come up overhead. As you come down, you're not rowing. You're just training that position. If you wanted, hinge forward and hold it. That's it, all right. Foot squat, reverse lunge. Almost forgot it. Let me rush in the head. Three seconds. Let's do it. Hit it. Use those abs, use your breath. Let those shoulders relax, no shrugging shoulders. That's it, pullovers, hip bridges. Three seconds, here we go, on your back, begin. Slight bend in your elbow here. Don't lock it out. Feel those lats work. Beneath the armpits, down the sides of your back. That's it. Please rest. Rest and rest. 
Let's have a little bit of water. No water. We got a minute. Before we change into our flow. So in that set and the fluency, we're looking at basic movement patterns, fundamental movement patterns. And we're training them. We're trying to grease the groove, right? Teach the joints to move in a way that is appropriate. So we can add more weight as we get stronger, we can move faster as we develop endurance. That's what the point is there, to train the fundamental movement patterns. And now, as we get into our flow, what we're looking to do is string movement patterns together. Increase endurance, grace, coordination. So come on down to hands and knees. We're gonna extend one arm and the opposite leg. And as we do this, we're gonna think about the position of our spine, the tilt of our pelvis, the position of our shoulder blades on the rib cage, our neck, all of that. I'm gonna keep going. Try it with your feet flexed as well as pointed. And then lift your knees up and try taking that contralateral displacement and crawling with it. Forward and back, maybe side to side. Always moving one hand and the opposite foot. Back and forth. And then come back, come to a deep squat position. And we're gonna go back to hands placed on the floor. And we're gonna kick one foot up. I'm gonna move out of the shadows here. Prepping for what you might think of as like a handstand. So you can keep both feet down, back and forth here. We're gonna gradually take one foot off the floor and then the other. Thinking about getting inverted, getting upside down, changing our perspective. And maybe you just wanna stay here for a little while. Maybe you like going down to the squat that's okay. What you really want to be thinking about is changing your perspective, getting into a position that you don't find yourself in every day. If you can play around and get airborne, balance on your hands a little bit, that's fun. Don't go beyond your comfort zone, ability level, or safety relative to the spacing in your location. No need to knock over any lamps or flip over the couch or whatever you have near you. Just play around with being upside down. You could come to your forearms, bring your head towards the ground, lift your knees up and down. Just change your point of view. Be safe, but playful. Okay. And we're going to come back to hands and knees. And we're just going to pick our knees up off the floor. And we're going to hold again. Check in with your thighs. They may have felt like they got some good work today already. Bring your knees down if you have to. Reset and come back up. How does this position feel now? as compared to when we first did it. Now, if you were with us last week, all this will be familiar to you. And I want you to keep your knees up. 
But if this is your first time here, keep your knees down and rotate until you're face up. Keep both hands or replace both hands on the floor. Open the chest and stretch. And you're just gonna go back and forth. Hands and knees, to hands, buttocks and knees. Otherwise, keep those knees up. And do the same thing. We're moving one hand and the same side foot back and forth. Maybe you want to go around again and back. Reach your arm up and around. Up, around and back. And then we're back to the bird dog. So we've got this nice little flow, this support flow, where we're training the support pattern. Our ability to stabilize the spine, the hips, the shoulders, the trunk in effect. And then we crawl. Maybe now you wanna use your space. Imagine yourself a cat stalking its prey. And then the handstand. Whatever version you ended up with. And then the hold. Hands and knees, hands and feet, bringing awareness to your breath and the rest of your body. And then we go from face down to inverted in a variety of ways, moving one hand and the same side foot. Back and forth. Whatever you have. If all you have is a mat, you can't really travel. Try playing around with it. Opposite. Foot hand. And if your wrists get to be too much, just sit and stretch them. You could even just hold them on the floor, palms up, back of the hands down. Feel free to continue or come and stretch the wrists with me. I'm gonna take the palms down, fingers pointed behind you. Just bring the palms to the floor and stretch the wrists. We'll do some wrist circles. Both directions, 20. Each. All right, we're going to finish with one more set. Bird dog, crawl, handstand, hold, and drunken spider, I've seen it called. 
Put hand to inverted, same side. All right, so we're gonna start with the bird dog. We're gonna go with 10 repetitions each side, alternating. Here we go. Focus on the limbs that are stabilizing you. And we crawl 20 paces, forward, backward, sideways, whatever combination moves you. And then we handstand, five, keep, five kicks each side. And then we hold. Try to keep your knees just hovering off the ground. 10 more seconds. Five. That's it. And then we invert. Face down to face up, five each direction. Good, and then we finish. Couple of deep breaths, a little sip of water, and we'll cool it down. Alrighty, Rue. Today I think we're gonna foam roll, and maybe we'll get in a little stretching too. But we're gonna start on the quads. So come down to elbows right on top of your foam roller and just walk forward and back or saw forward and back on the foam roller now if you have a dynamic stretch routine that you'd rather do or an active isolated stretch routine go ahead and do that I like squeezing up the muscles and I would be nice. But that's just me. Do what feels right in your body. Just listen to the feedback. Sometimes what feels right in the end isn't. It just feels good in the moment. But it's actually not what we need. So just be honest with yourself and listen to the feedback over the series of workouts that you do for your body. I'm gonna go to the spine and roll the upper back, shoulders. I'm starting with my elbows wide Roll on top of the shoulder blades. But when I'm ready, I'll bring my elbows together to roll between the shoulder blades. And I'm going to roll one at a time. 
I'm gonna keep my elbow close and just roll right on top of that shoulder blade and then I'll reach overhead. And then roll beneath the shoulder blade, not into the shoulder blade, but beneath on the rib cage into the lats. Straightest. And then I'm gonna switch sides. I'm not trying to address any trigger points here, really. I'm just massaging the muscles, promoting fluid exchange through the tissues after this session. I'm gonna go to the glutes now. I'm gonna cross one ankle over the opposite knee to stretch the glutes as I roll them. I'm also gonna go out to the side and roll the glute medius, a little bit of the hip flexor, the sensor fascia lata and just promote fluid exchange, get a little massage. Just check in with everything after the work. I'm gonna look at the IT bands, back toward the hamstrings. And then I'm gonna switch sides. I roll out the side of that hip. So I'm above the hip bone, like the greater trochanter, but I'm below the pelvis. I'm like right on the side of the meat. I'm gonna roll back and forth, front side to back. And when I roll the IT band, I'm really trying more to get the outer hamstring and the outer thigh, the outer quad, where the muscle is, after having rolled the top, the hip flexors. I wanna do the calves as well. I think a lot of us or we don't recognize how tight our calves are. And that can give us trouble up into the knee, down into the foot. So roll side and side, both calves. Cross up and down. With your ankle, let your ankle kind of just hang. Alrighty. I'm gonna come onto the side. Side lying, knees bent, both arms out in front. You're gonna keep your knees glued together to the floor. Bottom arm stays on the floor. You're just gonna rotate looking behind you. When you rotate, keep your hips stacked and your low back neutral. Let the rotation happen at the rib cage. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale to come back. Find a sequence that works for you and repeat that three times. Don't worry about how far you go. Worry about how true your rotation is. Think about the arm extending away from the body. And the shoulder blade sliding on the back, on the rib cage. Keep 
keeping your top hips forward and your knees set. Switch sides. From your side, push yourself up to seated. I'm gonna stretch the upper back. Draw one arm across the body. Pull into it with the opposite arm. Take a couple of nice deep breaths. And then switch. When you're done, come on up. Thanks, y'all. Have a great day. See you next time.